What is up, guys? My name is Ryan. Welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. Now, with the addition of Topaz and Ambi, as well as Gnifen, for today's video, we have another tier list that we want to go over, or the updated tier list version for the current patch, patch 1.4. But before we hop into the topic of today's video, I just want to advertise my Discord server real quick. Link for that is in the description of every video. Definitely make sure to check that out. Um, you will always be notified when I do upload, when I do stream, as well as there are a couple of um, channels where you can chat with my um, community that I currently try to build here. If you have questions to me, you also can always message me on the Discord server or on Discord. I'll try to help you as soon as I can, as well as my YouTube short section where I try to upload every day. So definitely check that out and support me there. All right. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the topic. So I as always waited a couple of days before I wanted to update the tier list. I tried to update the tier list with every um, character that got included into the game. So we're currently on pride1.gg. Um, definitely make sure to check them out. I think this website is very good. Um, and the majority of times I always do agree with their um, opinion here. I think it, start, it, it slowly starts that I I disagree in some parts now, but like still though, I think they're still doing a very great job with um, how they provide information on the website. So the link for this is also in the description down below. All right. Um, so I'll just quickly uh, get into the tiller. So we have three categories, single target, blast damage, and AOE. Um, I think that blast damage and AOE are like the main categories right now because we're I think it's more like blast damage. So for the tier list, I will mainly look at blast damage, but we will also take a quick peek into the other categories. If you don't know what blast damage is, it basically means if you do hit one enemy, um, the enemies that stand on the side, the adjacent enemies also get damage, which is blast damage. So blast damage will hit a maximum of three enemies and a minimum of two enemies, while AOE will hit all enemies on the enemy uh, on the enemy side and single target of course will only hit one enemy then we have four categories here we have the damage dealers which are obviously dps characters debuffers and amplifiers so debuffers are basically based around um, making the enemy weaker so you will eventually do more damage or give you an advantage in uh, other categories like uh, speed or um, yeah something like this or like freeze them so that they won't move and something like this. Amplifiers are based in increasing the stats of your team um, so that you are stronger or maybe faster or yeah, whatever. And sustain characters are therefore defensive capabilities. So basically healing and tanking. Yes. So these are the categories for the introduction of the tier list. Um, let's take a quick look at the change log. So I'll always go over the change log. So Basically, what changed during the last time that I looked into the tier list? And I think we have two change logs here. We have one on the 27th, which is a couple of days ago, and one on the 13th, which is very recent changes. So basically, two change logs uh, since the last update, since Jingliu got included. So I will always take a look at the character, and we will see if there are any particular changes. And as there are particular changes, um, we will also take a quick note into the change lock here so yeah let's go um category one by one if there are no significant changes to the last tier list i think that i will skip over them um so yeah let's start off with damage dealers so number one still king and queen with the addition of topaz and nambi nothing changed here jingliu and imbiber the lune are certainly uh, are currently still on the top of the tier list they are the best dps characters right now into the game with no doubt um next we have chinkwe and sila i think they also didn't move here uh oh wait sila was sila did sila move down i have to check real quick okay no sila didn't move down okay so i think this is no change still till this day and i also can live with that that sila is s tier chinkwe is s tier for the blast um uh, for the single target then if we're taking a quick look for these four, all blast damage, okay, and AOE damage, 
Okay, so there are all significant changes in the S tier for the categories, but as you can see, and Bible the Lune and Jing Liu for all categories, they're all S plus tier. They're all the best characters in the game right now. Now, if we just look at Ching Kui and Sili, let's see for blast damage. So they are still here. They are still in the S tier. And for AOE damage, only Sila is here, while um, Ching Kui is not in the S tier anymore, which is kind of understandable. Sila just resets as soon as she attacks. Um, and she kills an enemy, she gets another turn. So she basically has the potential to kill every four or five characters on the enemy board as long as you have enough skill points. Uh, while Ching Kui cannot really do this, um, I think she's not really able to kill more than three enemies, even though she has the potential to kill uh, enemies in waves. But I think she has not the, the potential like Sila. And we don't even have to talk about Jing Liu and Mbaba the Lune. She's not on the same level as them. And she's also not on the same level uh, as Sili for AoE damage. For blast damage and for single target damage, I definitely can see Ching Kui on the same level as Sila. All right, let's move on to the A tier. So since there are no significant changes here, besides um, Blade and Kafka moving down, I think Blade and Kafka were on the S tier for single target damage. Now they're on the same level as Jing Yuan. So let's take a quick look at the um, um, change lock here. So Blade. After more testing, we notice Blade's single damage output lags behind other characters in the S tier. He truly shines in both Blast and AoE scenarios, but against a single target, he struggles. And for Kafka, same as above. So for Kafka and Blade, they say that they struggle for single target scenarios, which I honestly have to disagree a little bit. I still think that Kafka and Blade don't struggle in single target scenarios because the damage don't really get amplified in my opinion just because um, of the blast damage that they are doing and the AoE damage that they are doing. I think that the single target damage is not really limited because of that. So in my opinion, actually, I would at least move Kafka still down because I think for Kafka, it doesn't matter if she does single blast or AoE damage. I think she's um, consistent for all three categories, honestly. Because Kafka is like a, the type of character. She's very similar to Topaz, which I will talk later about. But I think Kafka is a character that cannot really be power crept. And if there, like, basic, if there is another character, a dot character, that will be stronger than Kafka, then Kafka will move more into a support sub-DPS role, but she will still be insanely good because she will be able to enable that character. Of course, that's not, that's, of course, overall not the topic that we want to aim for. Because the problem is, I don't really see Kafka and Blade being in the same tier as Jing Yuan even for single target damage. I mean, for Blast, of course, there are S tier, both. There are one tier under Mbappé de Lune and Jing Liu, which is totally fair, in my opinion. There are the next best. I think after those two, these are the next two best. Uh, these, okay, let's say these three are the next best characters. And Ching Kui is, of course, in the same tier, but I think Ching Kui is still on E6, slightly worse than those three, because she relies on RNG. But, like... In terms of overall kit damage and something, I think I can see that she can, that she is on the same level as those three characters. But I don't see, even on single target damage, that these two are on the same level as Jing Yuan. Honestly, though. So this, this is basically my opinion. But overall, I still can live with the fact because uh, usage rate of these two are kind of similar, I think. Kafka is used a little bit more than Jing Yuan. Um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, this is like basically a little, a small problem that I have. So, then we have Hook and Clara. Is there a change for those? So, we're moving down to the B tier. I just wanted to check if there is a small, if there are changes to Hook and Clara. Okay, yeah, they're all, this is just for Blast and AoE. Okay, and Hook, okay, Hook. She moved down from C to B tier in single and Blast damage. The 1.4 enemies are tailored toward fire characters and hook benefits from it the most, especially in single and blast scenarios. Okay, I think this is a fair reason to move off hook because um, we're now in patch 1.4 on the second half. The memory of chaos is tailored to fire characters just because Topaz is the newest addition into the game. Um, for single target damage, they moved hook up. 
Okay, for blast and for AoE damage, it's still the no for AoE damage is AC for hook. But in the other categories, they moved her up. I think that's a fair addition. Um, but they also should move Himiko up then. Um, but just because of single target damage, I definitely think that Hook will all damage Himiko in single tar target. So she's definitely a tier up. Um, the other ones didn't change here. So I will i won't talk about Yang, Qing, um, Su Sheng and Clara because there are no changes here. They're still in the same tier as well as these characters. They are, for the single target, they are still in the same, same tier. For the blast damage, Clara moved uh, down from the S tier. And for Hook is no real change. And Himiko moved up, okay. So let's talk about Clara first, then we move on to Himiko. So here Clara was the same. For the blast damage, Clara moves down from S to A tier because of the fact that they say here, the current memory of chaos is terrible for physical characters and even worse for Clara. The enemy types you fight at the higher stages are the ones Clara hates. They only attack once or focus on single target because it drastically affects how often she counters. Same as the uh, on for S and then for AOE, she moves from S plus to S tier for the same reason as above. We think Clara will constantly move up and down the tier list with every patch based on the enemies we will face there. So expect her to appear in the change lock often. All right. Okay, I definitely can see that. But um, yeah, there was one problem that I had in the last tier list. Clara was on the S plus tier. And I said, I never can see Clara being on the S plus tier. Never. Even if, um, even if the enemies are favored uh, for her in the memory of chaos. Just because I think that the kit of those two characters, of Ambiver, the Luna, and Jing Liu, is worlds better than of any other DPS character currently existing in the game. We don't talk about patch 1.5 as we get Organsi, a new edition. He could be on the same level as them. Maybe not. Or patch 1.7 or 1.6, whatever character is included here. They could become into the same level as those because they're new characters, new additions. But just for Clara, I don't really think Clara could be on the same level as these two. I think Clara is a little worse. And um, even with the reason they say Clara can appear um, in this tier and this tier, depending on the patch, I would say that Clara shouldn't be above this tier on the AoE or on the Blast category. So if she moves down from the Blast category, I think she could still stay at the S tier. I, I, I don't think that she is A tier, honestly. But she's just A tier right now because the the enemies in the memory of cares aren't favored for her. So that's a good reason or an okay reason for me to put her on the A tier. But like overall, Clara is in the blast category and S ca uh, character for me. For single target that she is B is fine. And for AOE that she is an S character is also fine. But I, as I said, I will never move her up from there. Now for Himiko... Yeah, single target, she's horrible. Blast damage, she is in the B tier, uh, which I don't really understand. I think if she is B tier on the blast category, why is she not also um, in the same tier as in the AOE category? So, yeah. Sometimes sometimes I, I don't really understand. If you're good in AOE, aren't you automatically also good in blast? Um, if you're good in Blast, you're not automatically good in AoE. I get that. But if you're good in AoE, you should be also good in Blast because you hit at least three enemies, right? So that that's like what I don't really understand. If if you guys have an explanation for that, just let me know in the comment section down below. I'll um, be happy to discuss about that. So basically, Himiko moved up because of the fact that the characters are now more favored for fire. So current MOC is great for fire characters and Himiko performance improved compared to the previous phases. However, her single and blast ratings will remain the same as she has trouble competing with characters who are a tier higher in them still. All right, okay, okay, okay. Now, now I get it. They compare the characters with characters that are in the same, in the same category. And... As she is not technically uh, bad in blast damage, there are characters that are better in blast damage. Okay, I get that, I get that. So, 
yeah, I think that's unfair. That's a fair ranking then. If they're all, they're just comparing characters and say if they they are on a better level than Himiko. And for AOE, just compared to other characters, there is no better AOE character than Himiko um, for the fire type. So that's why she moves to the A tier. Um, so I think this this is fair. Himiko gets, of course, uh, better with the current memory of Chaos. I definitely saw that. I definitely was sure that Himiko gets more relevant, but she don't get relevant overall. Like, she just gets better, but not good, if that makes sense. Okay. So, I think for other char DPS characters, there are no particular changes, right? Okay. So, let's move on to the debuff category. I think there is uh, also no change here. Uh, so, we will just talk about the new characters. So, Civil Wolf, still the best. Pella, S tier. Then we have Luca and Sam, uh, Luca and Welt here, as well as Sample. So, for me, the thing is, I don't really understand why Topaz is in the debuff category, right? Um... I know she is not technically a damage dealer, but sh is she a debuffer then? Um, maybe? She could also be an amplifier, right? Because she amplifies follow-up attacks. Uh, but yeah, they it's their decision. I think I still can live with that, that uh, Topaz is in the debuffer category. But I don't know if she really belongs here. For Gunaifen, I can see that she's from the Nihility Path. I really can see that to uh Gnifen belongs in this category but for topaz i'm not too sure here but yeah um let's just talk about those two characters because as i said other characters didn't change let's check them for the blast category so there are both s tier for blast and for aoe there are both in the a tier all right so i think topaz is an insanely good character i think she's really really good her kit is very very um how to say under underestimated she's a very underrated character i think she is better than um the community uh tells how good she really is because i think that she um people do um compare her to kafka in a way which i can see because she, she's not she, she they they say she is the follow-up character for Kaf, uh, for oh Kafka is the, um, mm, well, oh my god, guys, sorry. Kafka is the dot uh, amplifier, while Topaz is the follow-up amplifier. That is what the community says, and Topaz takes the same role as Kafka for dot um, for follow-up attacks, which I think I can agree with that. I think Topaz, a, a kit which evolves around follow-up attacks, or amplifying um, follow-up attacks is really really good but i just had made a video recently where i do think that there are no real good follow-up attack characters so i think the best follow-up character which i actually didn't mention in my video because um just after uh seeing topaz and nambi for um quite some days i noticed that probably the best follow-up uh character is kafka because for every basic attack that you're doing, Kafka will do a follow-up attack. The only problem is that you usually don't build crit on Kafka because you want to use her in a dot team. So you focus more on attack percentage and speed. A little bit of affected rate, but Kafka has a lot of affected rate in her kit already. So basically just attack and speed. And so your follow-up attacks won't do that much damage. But they are getting stronger as you crit with them. If you use Topaz and Kafka on one team, which is a possibility. But I don't think that this is a team comp that is supposed to exist like that, even though it possibly could be the best combination right now. If we do, if it is not Kafka, then it is definitely Himiko, because Himiko can do a follow-up attack as soon as you do weakness breaks, which um, you build your team around the enemy, so you will always weakness break. So I think... The next best is Himiko, or maybe Himiko and Kafka are on the same level. But there are both not characters that are made for follow-up attacks. So as soon as there is a character that does DPS, or a lot of DPS, um, around follow-up attacks, similar to like Clara does, like not, not the same kit as Clara, but like on the damage level on Clara or even higher, I think Topaz will be the best partner for that character, and then she will become insane. And yeah... It could take quite some time 
So it could take like more than six months to include one or more follow-up attack characters because just including one follow-up attack characters means that we have a specific new team comp with Topaz and the new character. Um, but we will need like more follow-up attack characters so that it that Topaz becomes worth. But I think that this is a character that cannot be power creep. She's very, very future-proof in my opinion, as well as Kafka. These two characters are characters that... Um, if they get power crept by damage, they become supports or sub DPS characters and they are still very very relevant for the team because they are there to make the new characters even better. And if we compare this to Jing Liu and Mbaibu the Lune, they are currently on top of the game, yes, but they are more likely to be power crept than those two characters because I think those two characters only can become better as there are more um, characters who do the same thing as them. If there are more characters that do the same thing as Mbaibu the Luna and Jing Liu, they just get enemies and then they compete for the top spot. And that's the difference for those two characters. That's why I really like Topaz here. Um, and yeah, that, that's really good. For UE damage, I can see that because Topaz, um, proof of that is basically single target. You can just place it on one enemy uh, and she... She can hit uh, adjacent enemies, so I definitely can see that she is not as good for AoE. Same as for Gnifen here. Um, same thing, basically. Yeah, so I only can see them. Um, in Blast Damage, they are very good. For single targets, uh, Topaz is also really good. Because she um, her kit is basically um, single target. And for Gnifen, that she is a little worse than these, is definitely... Um, is definitely fair to say. I think Gnifen has to be compared to Luca and Sampo because she is basically used in a dot team with alongside with Kafka. So I'd say if we compare her to those three characters, she is definitely the best. She is the new best four star dot character. I think she's better than Luca and I think she is better than Sampo. But if we compare her support capabilities, because I think that this character is like an overall very good all-rounder she has support capabilities but she also does damage but um she's like not the best in every category but like overall she's better than those two but if we compare her for support capabilities we have to compare her basically with pella and silver wolf i mean that she cannot compete with silver wolf is very clear silver wolf is the top debuffer or the top character in this category but if we compare it to Pella I think Pella is still better and that's why I think it is very fair to say to put Gnifen in the A tier for single target in the blast category um, if we move her into the S tier it's definitely fair to say to move Pella even one more tier up because I really think Pella is still way better than Gnifen in every uh, in, in the aspect of debuffing while just in the aspect of sub DPS Gnifen is better than those two characters. So she's pretty much in the mid of the debuffer categories if we put her here. So I think this is very, very, a very fair placement for her as one of the new four stars. Yeah. Now, if we just go into the amplifiers and sustains, there are no real changes here. So that's why I don't want to go over them real, uh, really, because, yeah, Bronya Tingyan, top of the game, as, uh, followed by Asa and Yukong. This is unchanged. I think there will there will be a change as soon as Rune Mei gets included in here. She just got uh, revealed by the official Honkai Star Rail to the page. So there will be a new amplifier coming into the game. Um, I think then there will be new changes here for the amplifier category. So for the damage dealer category, uh, Argenti will be the next edition that will make changes here i think the debuff category should stay the same for at least one to two patches now i think there shouldn't be big changes only because memory of chaos changed um this will change but a new edition of a character won't change the position of these characters i think and for the sustain characters the next edition is hoho -Ho, which will also be in the next patch 1.5 um i think she could uh, shake the spots of these five characters up though i definitely think so i am pretty sure that she will be here in this uh, in this tier list and we will see because she's an abundance character so it is basically the first enemy for locha 
So they are basically fighting for the place to be the best abundance character. And then she also competes with uh, Fushuan to be the best sustained character in the game. So we will see. We will see. It will definitely be very interesting as soon as that character comes out. I don't think that I will pull for either of those because I think I will go for Rune Mei. Um, but yeah, I, I have to see. We will see. We will see. So yeah, there are no there since there are no changes, I won't go into amplifier and sustain anymore. Um, yeah, because they're also the same for blast and AOE damage. Uh, yeah, then. That's it for today's TLS video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, then definitely make sure to um, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.